Hello, I'm Linda Ann, video creator for Color Art, and today I'm going to demonstrate how I painted a composition that I call Dream. I used Radiant Rain, Shimmering Mist, Twinkling H2Os, and Silk's Acrylic Glazes. I have a brand new stamp um, that I purchased recently, and it's rough on one side of course and smooth on the other side. I'm going to use this piece of matte board that's colored on one side and not on the other side to make a design. At my house if anything doesn't uh, eat, breathe, or move it's going to get painted more than likely. So I'm going to build a little wall around this with some cardboard and then I will use this stamp, not as a stamp, but as a, a mask, to mask off the paint that I'm going to use. I built, built the wall around it with cardboard because uh, I'm going to use the Radiant Rain Shimmering Mist, and it has some overspray quite often, and I don't really want it to get on my desk right now. So the color that I have chosen is Ginger Peach. Quite often, if you've had a bottle sitting around, when you first start spraying, you're gonna get a big splatter like I got right here. That doesn't bother me because I'm looking for a dreamy look for this. I'm going to take a brush and I will smooth out the edges of that as much as I can and that's fine because if I have a lot of different colors in it, it'll just give it more of a dreamy appearance. Apple Blossom is the name of the next color that I used on this page. I really like the way Apple Blossom looks with the Ginger Peach. A lot of the spray has collected there on the textured side of the stamp, which is facing up. And so I'm going to try to lift it up carefully, but I dripped it, and I'm going to smear that out. Since I dripped it on there anyway, and since the wings look a little wide to me, I, I don't like the wings being quite that wide. Um, they wouldn't have stamped that wide if I had stamped it. I'm going to use the textured side, put it back in place and give it that texture from that stamp. And I, I kind of like that. When you make mistakes, sometimes it forces you to do something that you weren't planning, but makes it better. So I always tell my students at school, mistakes are our best friends in art. That makes us think harder about what we can do with it. And since I like layers so much, <laughs> hardly ever the first things I put on a page show anyway. I've switched over to Twinkling H2O's now, and this color is Wild Plum. I really had these watercolors wet for a long time with a lot of water on them, and so I picked up a lot of pigment. This came out really dark. But I really don't care about that because this part, uh, the dragonfly, is going to be the most vivid part of the entire composition. I keep a wipe-off page near me to clean my brushes on before I uh, dip them in water and swish them around and this time I'm using a card. I decided to, to uh, shake my brush after I did dip it in water, shake my brush on the paper to give some more color in the background and I'm using my spray bottle here to spread that color. I didn't want it as dark as the dragonfly because that would make it as important as the dragonfly. Twinkling H2O's are hard pan watercolors, so that means that you need to wake them up a few minutes before you start painting. Uh, give them at least five minutes minimum. I always give them at least 10 to 15 minutes before I start painting. Spritz them with water before I gather my supplies, and they're usually ready by the time I'm ready to start working. Here I've started to design my dragonfly wings with a pit pen. It's black, and I'm just kind of outlining sketchily where I want the wings to go. I don't want them to be in this entire white area. I, as I said before, I think that's too big. The uh, mask that I used was larger than what it would have been if I had just printed. And so I also wanted to kind of reshape the wings the way I wanted them. Uh, another thing I'm doing here is I'm designing them with some uh, just random designs, whatever kind of comes to mind as I'm sketching. 
I'm about finished with all the designs that I want to put here, so I'm going to use Silk's Acrylic Glazes. I'll begin with Royal Orchid and Pink Grapefruit. I did a soft sketch of a face in pencil uh, when I was off camera, and you will see that when I move the little plate that I'm mixing paint on. Okay, speaking of mixing paint, and this is important. If I sound a little repetitive now, it's because I discovered something late in my art life just a few weeks ago that I didn't know about acrylics, and uh, I'm gonna share that with you because it is the most common mistake that I'm seeing on YouTube videos. I see people say, oh, if you wanna thin things down, or if they get a little uh, uh, thick, you need to add water to them and stir them up and then close the jar. Well, that's not true, and that's what I believed until just a few weeks ago. And I've already mentioned this on an, a, another video, but those these particular jars are wide mouth jars. That means every, every time you open them, they're exposed to air, which starts the drying process. But did you know that if you dip a wet brush into them, that that also helps them dry? That starts the drying process. Completely opposite of what we all believe. So I'm stressing that in all my videos. I decided to go in here and uh, use my pencil to do a little shading. Then I'm going to use my um, Silk's Acrylic Glazes to go right over that pencil. So back to what I was saying, don't add water to your acrylic jars. One of the things that I have uh, started to do now is use a palette knife to dip out my paints because it's dry and I put it on a plate and then if I want to add water to it that's fine because I'm going to be using them. I'm using the Royal Orchid color in places where there would be shadows and then I'm using the Pink Grapefruit color which is a very soft color uh, and building up layers in areas that would be more like the highlighted areas of her face. The upper lip is usually shadowed and the lower lip usually catches more of the light and has highlights. I decided that instead of dreamy, she looks a little like she's deprived of oxygen, so I'm going to use Love Struck in the Silk's Acrylic Glaze, and I'm going to add a little more color to her uh, cheeks and to her lips with Love Struck. Love Struck is a color that has a lot of violet undertones to it, so it works nicely with this other color with the Royal Orchid. And here's an example where I added water to it to make it uh, a softer color, but I want this to dry, so it's okay to add water to it. Silks, as their name indicates, Silks Acrylic Glazes, indicates that it's, it is a glaze. It's going to be transparent. And so the nice thing about Silks is they do dry so fast that you can just almost make layer after layer. By the time you put one on, it's almost dry and ready for the next one. And back to the little card to wipe off my extra colors. And these are making nice little flowers here. Flowers are always so easy. And a little more paint. Softening it with my finger here and there. Don't be afraid to turn your page. Um, when I do watercolors on video, I find it very difficult because quite often I'll tape it down to my table. But if you are working at home and you're not doing a video for someone, be sure that uh, you can lift your page and turn it around and work that way. Oh, I wanted to tell you too, one of the reasons I went from Twinks to Silk's Acrylic Glazes is because I had forgotten that matte board warps so easily and I was getting a lot of warpage with the uh, twinks because I was putting lots of water with them and I didn't have to put nearly as much and these dry so fast that they were excellent just for this uh, matte board, this scrap of matte board that I had laying around the house. I think my dragonfly wings need to come up a notch, so I'm using Mediterranean Blue 
And if you've watched any of my videos before, then you know that I can't hardly get away from a painting without putting something in it that has a turquoise color in it. So I'm going to sparkle these wings a bit with some turquoise, and I'll probably use several layers to get it to really uh, come out because you see this first layer is real soft. And so I'll paint this in where I want it, and then I'll go back and touch up with as many layers as I need to make it look the way I want it to look. And may she rest in peace, my poor second grade teacher would be very alarmed at what I'm doing because I'm not particularly staying in the lines, I'm just dabbing the paint in the areas where I want it. And it goes outside the lines and inside the lines and over the other paint, and that's okay. I had a bit of an idea of how I wanted this uh, particular composition to look before I started it. And when I do that, I always give myself permission not to go there. But kind of crazy to me, this time it almost worked. It's almost exactly what I had in mind. But if you stray from what's in your mind, go with the flow. Work with what's happening. Because a lot of the time, your right brain takes over and and just does what's needed to be done. And then the little mistakes that happen here and there and you solve them, then that uh, helps make your work more creative also. The painting that I did right before this one, I think that I overworked it. It was a, a picture of a lady in a bonnet and I, I, I definitely overworked that one. That's going to happen. You're going to have good days, bad days. You're going to have art that you love, art that you hate. I want to make a suggestion to you. Do not throw away the ones you hate. I know you don't want to look at them. Don't put them on your wall. Put them, date them, and put them away. Put them out of your sight. It's a great benchmark to go back to. You don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. And a lot of times when you look back at where you've been, you've come a lot further on this trip than you think you have. So if you want to know how much you've improved, no more throwing away things that you don't like. Date them, put them away, hide them, and pull them out someday after you've forgotten them. This has really been a fun afternoon for me. I never get tired of doing art. I hope you've enjoyed it too. I want to remind you, always check the description box. Below the video, it, it'll say video description. Click on that, and a lot of times you'll have to click on a little thing at the bottom that says see more, or I, it may be at the top, I've forgotten <laughs> since I'm not looking right at it. But uh, Color Art has all kinds of links for uh, getting discounts, for displaying work that you do playing with color art uh, for uh, the blog and their video side. There's all kinds of links that I'll put there. Plus I put my personal links uh, in the description box so that you can find me if you want to find me. And I hope you do. One more thing I'd like to share with you is that when I finish any work uh, in silks, I take it outdoors because of the fumes and use a fixative, an acrylic fixative on it. Silks, twinks, and radiant rains will all move if they get wet, so that gives it a little extra protection. I don't think I overworked this one, so I'll probably put it uh, in a mat instead of out of sight with the date on it. This is one way that you might uh, hang this particular painting, or flip it around and hang it in this direction. That would be entirely up to my customer. All of the paints that I used today came from colorart.com. Check out their website. Hope you'll subscribe to my channel and to Color Art's channel. And uh, I try to answer all comments, so just give me a shout in the section below provided for comments. Uh, also, if you'll share it on this video on your social media, that's so much appreciated and it reaches more people. Also, if you enjoyed the video, Click on that little thumbs up down there. That lets me know which videos you enjoy the most and helps me plan the, the tutorials that I will make for the future. 
And remember the card that I was making before I swished my paintbrush in water? Didn't turn out too bad, and I'm probably going to use it when I give a gift at a June wedding. Here it is, all finished. Just sitting down to make cards is not something that I really enjoy doing, but this was fun because it was just a few extra touches and I had my card. Easy peasy and no wasted paint. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.